Okay, so um, I wanted to do a presentation on the evolution of dance, but I'm main, mainly focused on ballet, tap, and jazz. So we'll start with ballet. So ballet kind of uh, took off in the 15th century in um, courts and uh, weddings, and they'd actually have the people in the royal courts participate in the ballet. And uh, one person who was really big on making ballet more popular um, during that time period was Catherine de Medici. Um, and she was married to King Henry II of France. Um, she funded multiple ballet festivals that were called Ballet de Cour. Um, later on, uh, King Louis XIV, he was a big proponent of ballet as well. He was actually a dancer. He was in uh, Ballet de la Nuit as the Sun King and he fostered an eagerness to learn ballet in France. Um, and that caused um, multiple, uh, the first ballet school to open, which was in 1661 in Paris. And um, in 1681, that was when the ballet started going from the courts, like in the very beginning, to stage. And that also started like a marriage between opera and ballet. So one of the first opera ballets that there were was um, Le Triomphe de l'Amour. And also uh, Jean-Georges Dobrer, so um, he, um, he was one of the main people who made a precursor to Meredith ballets, which is more things that we know today. Um, it, it's called Ballet de Action. So um, that is Jean-Georges, that is King Louis. Um, this is Catherine. And these are some examples of um, costumes that they wear. So as you as, as you can see, this is in the um, like at the very beginning. I don't know what they were thinking, but yeah, that's how they used to dress up. <laughs> and then these two are more towards like um, the 16th and 1700s. Um, notice how they're very long. Um, yeah, and as time went on, they changed. So I have some videos as well. So this is my little sister. She um, has been doing ballet since she was like two years old. And she really wanted to be a part of everything. I'm sure you guys can see this. This is my bedroom, so I'm sorry you guys can see. <laughs> So if you guys want to stand up, we're going to try some of these. Stand up. Don't worry, we're not going to do turns or anything. It's just going to be the easiest one. Okay. Let's do it. So, ballet time. Ballet time, friends. So, all right, so first position, as you saw in the little opening on the one. So, that's a little bit too wide. It's kind of. Yeah, so you start off like this, 
This is your normal standing position. So when you go into, I don't know if you guys can see my feet, but um, when you go into first position, you just so your heels make touch and your feet make a little bee. And your arms can either be like this, most of the time it's like this. Yeah. And then second position, let me speak a little bit. Pretty easy. You just glide in. And then third, you bring your right foot to the front. And if your heel is going to be touching the top of your toe. On your left. This is good. Um, so third is when you're kind of like making like a little zigzag. That's the little position. I thought it was third is this. Yeah, it's right in the strap, like she said. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Third is my second. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's third. It's when you're bringing your right. So right is in the front. And then fourth is when your right is in the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bro, the stand ain't out. This shit ain't flat flat. Right, how does that mean, bro? It's okay. And then the thing is when you're close together. I can't do that. I'm not saying that's what you can, but nope. Yeah. So your left foot is still in the normal position from first position, right? So your left is like this. Lifting. Your left is like this. And then your right just goes like this. <laughs> I know, that's too much force. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god, Katie's got her dancing shoes on. That oh, was yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then, Fuck the move. So oh, yeah. also, yeah. 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 And then, she also did, she also did elevators and railways. So that's pretty easy. It's kind of just going up on your tiptoes sometimes. So elevate, you start first, you just tiptoe, you go up, and then you go down. And then, uh, releve, I, I normally like spread out a little bit. Just yeah, you just spread out a little bit. Just because that's what I do. So you plie, which is just the knees. And then you elevate, so you elevate. So, you here, Yeah, exactly. Good job! I'm so proud. I'm so proud. She's the proud mother. I know. Look at all my babies. Come back. Uh, yeah. Alright, so this one's kind of long, but I'm going to skip around because there's this one particular way that um, is really cool. So this is basically how um, a ballet class has evolved um, throughout the centuries. So you have like the 1800s, around like the 1860s, and then present day. And I'm going to skip forward because um, I have with us today, Jasmine Nighty. I suppose. Um, they also, uh, back in the beginning, it wasn't as much, it was more about like expressing and like telling a story a little bit. So as you can see, that's more of the costumes. Hold on. Okay, this is what it's like. This for me? Yes, the Marcelino. started to get like incredibly popular in the 19th century 
which was when the Romantic movement happened. And the Romantic movement was really all about this music, art, and ballet, and like the kinds of dance. Um, it also focused on um, being uh, uh, like more focused on like spirituality and um, portraying women as very fragile. So um, some of the most popular ballets that came out during that time period um, is Giselle and La Sophie. Um, it also started, um, this also started um, point work, so like the Leo all the way up on their tombs. Um, and that also um, spread, it started to expand into Russia. In Russia, they produced a whole lot of ballets, like really, really popular ones, like Nutcracker, uh, Sleeping Beauty, Swan Lake. Um, they also started to focus more on precision and technique. And I'm going to show you some clips to like sh make that as <laughs> evidence. They also started wearing more um, calf length tutus. So it started to get a little bit easier to dance in their costumes as time went on. Because as you see now, like they don't, most ballets, most ballet dancers don't really wear like long tutus anymore. It's either like the ones that are like up here, or they just don't even wear them at all sometimes. Depending on the kind of dance that you're doing. So here's a clip from the Nutcracker. So see the shorter tutus and the point shoes. As you can see, she was very focused on each movement that she had. She you didn't really see her stumble or like quiver or anything because that was what they were trying to achieve. And then this is from Swan Lake. Um, this dance is very popular, and it's um, it's all about timing, as you'll see, because these four girls they're all going to be dancing at the same time, and if one of them is even like a hair of a second like late, it grows up a little bit faster. 
way. Yeah. Um, so next is Pat. Now it's time. So um, there are two types of tap. Um, the first one is jazz and rhythm, which is um, like the traditional style of tap, and it's mostly mainly, mainly focused, sorry, on musicality. Um, and then the other kind is more of the kind that we know in the Broadway style, which is about weaving dance into stories. So tap really began in the like mid 1800s, um, and it's was a combination of African tribal music, English and Scottish and Irish music, and they brought about um, new genres that focused mainly on making the tap sound, so like the, your shoe, like your heel toes, like heel toes, yeah. Um, it was also seen in uh, minstrel shows, so one of the people that I uh, researched was William Henry Lane, who's also known as Master Juba. Um, and he was a part of a group called the Ethiopian Serenaders, who were like a minstrel show, so they go around and they dance and they perform little things, and they got very popular in Victoria, England. So that's when it started to branch out of just like Africa, and it goes into England, because you know, England was, um, Africa was owned by certain parts of England and stuff. Um, and also there was, later on in the uh, 19th, like early 1900s, 1920s, and stuff like that. Um, Bill James Robinson, he was a very um, popular dancer. He was um, the first black man to be very popular in the United States and the English vaudeville scene. Um, he was um, pretty much known, most known for his roles in um, Shirley Temple movies. So, um, and he also, it was also kind of unheard of for um, him, he, uh, he went solo in 1908 after doing a run with uh, George W. Cooper in 1902, um, and going around, they were both going around dancing and stuff. Um, and he also ended up starring in his own film in 1943 called Stormy Weather. Um, another group of people that were pretty popular were um, the Nicholas Brothers, and they were more popular in the 1930s, and they brought about um, more ac acrobatic, um, it's called flash dancing, so it's um, a mix of like tap and ac acrobatic jumps, and sometimes they do like leapfrogs of each other. Um, this right here, that's Master Juba, so William Henry Lane, that's Bilbo James Robinson, and those are the Nicholas Brothers. So this is an example of um, some African tribal dance. <laughs>
Yeah. Um, so here's another clip of um, Bilbo James Robinson. This is like. Now you just watch.
Okay. Um, also, if you have time, uh, look at the Sun Foster version of it, which is like closer. Um, it's, I find that like back to in like the 80s and the 70s and stuff, like they weren't really as focused as um, in the dance area as we are now. I feel like it's gotten a lot more focused on. But yeah, so jazz. Um, this is gonna lead into like Preston's part of the presentation. Um, so jazz uh, originated in American folk dancing. Uh, African, sorry, African folk dancing. Um, and it entered America during the slave trade. And after the slave trade, it got infiltrated from the uh, slave trade. It ended up becoming very popular in New Orleans. Um, and it also like kind of helped with like ragtime and stuff. So in the, in the 1950s, it was more of um, like tap dancing and jazz, as from before we remember that there's two different types of tap and Broadway. Style is one of those tap, um, is one of those jazz styles. Um, there were a lot of very um, influential people um, concerning jazz. So Bob Fosky, he's the big one. Um, he did uh, some of his his most I, my favorite of his is Chicago, um, and he worked a lot with Anne Rankin, and um, he was most known for like really quick sharp. Um, and there's also Jack Cole and Catherine Dunham, so I have some videos of that. So this is from Chicago, so all about jazz. <laughs>
Said this is the jazz heaven to be more vaudeville era, but it didn't start as a jazz sort of sort of thing, you know. It began in France in the 18th century. Primarily it was a sort of comedic act interspersed with a bunch of dancing and a good amount of singing, but primarily it was a com comedy show. I couldn't find a good picture for the an older like French Bobillion show, so fairly early extravaganza. Now, this is whenever we all think of Bobbill, and it's just a talent show. America's got talent for old people. Um, for all over <laughs> It was brought over into the Americas in the late 1800s, about 1880, and it was there was a very stark differentiation from Friends. It was a talent show. You're singing, you're dancing, you can tell, you can tell some stories, be comedic, magic, this guy the other way. So you know, basically, America's got talent, but in the 1800s. Now, I'm about to drift into a few people who had a good start in vaudeville. Primarily, Harry Houdini. He, we all know who Harry Houdini is. He was a magician, escape artist. He was also an actor, until he wasn't. <laughs> but he was primarily known for being a magician and an escape artist. He was doing a handcuff show whenever he was still a small time, like, I can only compare this to like a musician performing in like a bar. Whenever a very big vaudeville mogul known as Martin Beck came up to him and said, I really like your stuff. Why don't you come over to my theater and we can get you an act for your own? And that's whenever everyone was astounded by the I'm trying to think of the word. Magicianship. <laughs> Magicianship, thank you. Magicianship of Harry Houdini, extravagant. He was an extravagant magician. Unfortunately, I couldn't find anything of his. He was also very famous for having passed away during the show due to appendicitis. And, um, and now we're going to go into a few other Bobbillions. We've got Adam, Co Adam Costello, who were primarily a comedy duo. Fred Astaire, he went he had his start in vaudeville as well, but went on to film, and in most of his films and music, you could see he, the background from vaudeville. Mickey Rooney as well. I'm pretty sure I'm not alone whenever I say I only knew Mickey Rooney from the Rankin Bass Christmas specials, and he was Santa Claus. I pray to God that I'm not alone whenever I say that. And pretty much one of the most well known out of all of our villains, Judy Garland, primarily known for her own dancing. She was she paired a few times with Mickey Rooney and Gene Kelly, but again, most people know her as Dorothy. Here we're gonna go into a couple of videos. This is Fred Stan. It's the best I can.
the biggest factor in that was the lower costs of producing and going to the center. Many vaudeville, vaudevillians, I can't for the life of me know how to say that, they primarily went to the silver screen with their acts, many of them filming their acts that they had performed live and only did that live one time and then spread it out throughout tons of cinemas for other people to see them. But as time went, as that went on, vaudeville slowly began to fade away into obscurity. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.